how does the panel feel? Uh, Jared brought up the issue of a adjuvant uh, treatment. Moving, we've talked about immune-related toxicities. Um, um, obviously, the surgical population lives a lot longer. What we know about these immune-related toxicities, they can be very delayed in their occurrence as their concern, either with monotherapy or how do people feel about uh, IO combos in the adjuvant setting. Um, any, any thoughts about uh, risk-benefit in that population? Again, it's, it's goals of care. Um, if you have the potential to increase the cure rate, then risk becomes much more acceptable. I mean, look at folks that undergo a bone marrow transplant. Right. You know, uh, talk about a risky situation. Why do folks accept that? They do that because it increases their rate of cure. And I think people will do that here too. Obviously, we, we need to be very vigilant in these patients and, and they have long survival and we have to be very careful. We have to use all the stuff we've learned about how to manage these side effects and be very cognizant of them. Um, but um, uh, I, I do think that the chance of cure justifies more risk. Yeah, yeah I agree with you, Mark. I, I, uh, it is hard to wonder how you're gonna get these combinations, these other 900 clinical trials that are in the advanced stage settings for, across cancers into earlier stages when these trials take so long to get done. Um, but I think, I agree with Mark, I think people don't want their cancer coming back. They're gonna take, they're gonna take that risk uh, that probably would be manageable uh, for most patients. Well, there I, is a way to go there though, neoadjuvant. Yeah, so I was gonna bring that up. I, I'm blown away by, I know the numbers are tiny out of, out of Hopkins and maybe some of your centers participated in this. You know, to get two doses of nivolumab for early stage cancer and have at least, you know, what's defined as a major molecular or pathologic response, That's less than 10% uh, uh, viable cells in about half of your patients, it, it really makes me start to question our clinic, our radiographic responses, because that, that same group, we probably would have measured about a response rate of about half of that. And, yeah. and yet, when, you look, when you look at it under the microscope, it's double. So what does that mean in the advanced setting? All these studies that are, are looking at response rates and PFS you know, are we, are we really able to measure the benefits of these drugs? Um, that, that study is really interesting, and there's many others that have launched now. I think we'll learn a lot more. Yeah, I mean, to be clear, there's 22 patients with a 40% I know, I know. pathological response yeah, but, rate. But in yeah. the advanced stage, though, the, sadly, those folks are unwell. And, and it's really clear when these drugs aren't working, at least in my experience. It's pretty rare yeah. when, they're, when they're working, and, and uh, we just can't appreciate it. Uh, sadly, they're not working well enough for a lot of people and, and the quickness of their illness growth and their symptoms tells you that. It, it's a different story here, but that's the beauty of pathologic response at the time of surgery. You know exactly what happened. You know exactly. Yeah, I, I think if it, if it, as Ross alludes to, I mean, if it's only seen in this study, that's, those are just a numbers game, but if it's seen across these trials, then it, you know, really, we have to start learning more about what's happening in our advanced mm -hmm. stage patients. Yeah, cer certainly it provides a lot of enthusiasm yeah. for a neoadjuvant approach, I, I think. But again, as Ross points out, numbers are small, but certainly worthy of further trials. Further it's good enough for accelerated approval, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, it, but it gets to your point about giving a drug for a long period of time that you may, they may not be working. Yeah, right. You know, yeah. I mean, the idea, by the way, in the, you know, we're involved with the tezolizumab trial, Ross is involved as well um, uh, in neoadjuvant, but it's also adjuvant, depending on the benefits seen in adjuvant and, of course, the safety there, too.